Praise the Lord. I pray the grace of God will reach every part of your heart and life in Jesus' name. To experience more of the grace of God. More of the love of God. More of the favor of God in Jesus' name. His grace reaches you. Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name. We thank you for the teaching of the word of God. And we thank you for all your people, all your workers, and all those who are rendering service to you, one way or the other. We pray, Lord, your grace will reach every one of us in Jesus' name. And we pray that your grace will perfect our service. And we pray that your grace will bring your favor in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. We pray that your goodness with your grace and glory will fill every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Uh, if God permits, and if God grants me the strength, I want to do chapter 5 first. And then before I release you, I will do chapter 6. And I know some of you might be dozing and sleeping by the time I get to the middle of chapter 6. Don't worry, you'll hear me in your dream. We're coming to chapter 5 now, reigning through Christ's abundant grace. We come to chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be justified by faith, we have peace with God, Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have received, we have, we have access by faith into this grace. Notice that. Into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And then we come to the last verse in verse 21. That has seen us range unto death, even so my grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. The grace of God will rule and reign in your life. It's a significant chapter because now Paul the Apostle had convinced and convicted the Jews and the Gentiles. And we're all brought under sin. But now it's begun to talk about the grace of God. And about the faith that brings us into this wonderful experience. Already he has told the Jew, forget about this circumcision. Move on. And believe in the Lord because everything we get from the Lord is by faith. Salvation. Justification. Adoption into the family of God, righteousness, right relationship with the Lord by faith. And then he also talks about now we reign. And we reign in righteousness, and righteousness reigns in our lives. For you to understand this chapter very well, which is the foundation of the dispensation of grace. Summarize it this way. B.C. A.D. B.C. before Christ. B.C. before conversion. Before we came to know the Lord. And before Christ came and offered himself. B.C. What happened then? He said we were born in Adam. It's in this chapter. We inherited the nature of Adam. It's in this chapter. And because sin entered through Adam, it entered into everyone. It's in this chapter. And sin reigned in every life. It's in this chapter. And death because of sin. It's in this chapter. B.C. Before Christ. Before conversion. Now, it's not going to leave us. B.C. At B.C. Before Christ. Before conversion. It's now going to talk about A.D. after his death. A.D. after our decision. A.D. after our deliverance. A.D. after our dominion. It says, 
what happened behind the cross, before the cross, and then what happened after his death on the cross of Calvary. And so you can tell before Christ, sin and death rage over us. After his death, after our decision, after our deliverance, out of dominion, we reign over sin and death. Look at verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigns from Adam to Moses. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Verse 17. In verse 17, for if by one, man, one man's offense, death range by one, much more, they that receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. You are in. Sin will not reign over you. Before Christ, there was universal guilt. Universal condemnation. But after his death, now that we can decide after that decision, now that we're delivered after that deliverance, now that he calls us to dominion, after that dominion, he tells us now that we have grace, universal, and we have justification. Look at verse 2. He tells us, in verse 2, it says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. It tells us in verse 15, in verse 15, But not as the offense, so also is the gift. Not as the offense, so also is the gift. You understand that? The offense of Adam passed on us no choice, no decision, no consent of ours. It just came, but it says now not so. As you think about the death of Christ and the grace that comes to us, now we have a choice. It doesn't, it doesn't pass on us just like that. The sin of Adam passed on us, the death passed on us, the guilt passed on us, the condemnation passed on us automatically. Not so with salvation. Not so with justification. Not so with the grace of God, the righteousness of God flowing into our lives. There is now a choice, a decision before that deliverance, before that salvation. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more. The grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. You are one of that many. Say, I am one of that many. It will be so, it is already in Jesus' name. Before Christ, we are born into corruption and condemnation. We are just born like that before Christ. Before we came to know Christ, Born into corruption and condemnation. Look at verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. That's B.C. A.D. After his death for us. We pass from death to life. And now we have grace. Now we have resurrection. Now we have righteousness. Now we have justification. Now we have full redemption. And now we will reign in life in Jesus' name. Verse 21, that as sin has reigned unto death, even so my grace reign through righteousness unto life eternal by Jesus Christ our Lord. Already you have the summary of the chapter. Let, let's break it to three parts briefly. Number one, the riches of grace and Christ's sufficiency. The riches of grace and Christ's sufficiency. Number two, 
the reconciliation of the ungodly through Christ's sacrifice. The reconciliation of the ungodly through Christ's sacrifice. Number three, true righteousness by grace through Christ's substitution. True righteousness by grace through Christ's substitution. Number one, the riches of grace and Christ's sufficiency. Look at it from verse 1. It's telling us about the grace of God and the riches of that grace in your life, in my life, in our lives, in the lives of the church. Therefore, be justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at that word, we have. We have. Because we're justified, because he forgives us, because he overlooks all our sins of the past. And everything has passed on under the blood of Jesus Christ. He sets us free. He says, by whom also, look at those two words again, we have. We have. It is not something we're going to have in the future. We have it right now. We have access by faith into this grace. Wherein we stand. You will stand. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Look at what he said. We have number one. We have peace. We're looking at, sec at um, the second chapter. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Reading from verse 14. Ephesians chapter 2, we're looking at verse 14. For he is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle, the middle wall of partition between us. He has broken down the middle wall of partition between the Jew and the Gentile. Even between God and the sinful man, that wall, that wall is broken down. We have peace with God. Number two, we have access into the grace of God. Access into the grace of God. The way is open. And any time and every time, you need grace in your life. Grace to be. Grace to do. Grace to achieve. Grace to live. You have access into that grace. Hebrews chapter 10. In Hebrews chapter 10, we're reading from verse 19. We have access into the grace. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near. No fear anymore. Let us draw near. No condemnation anymore. Let us draw near. No guilt anymore. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, understanding that he will not reject you. He will not push you away. Whatever your condition, your karma, and the blood of Jesus will avail for everyone in Jesus' name. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Because of what Christ has done, we have peace with God. We have access into this grace. We have hope in Christ. We have hope in Christ. We are no more hopeless. We are no more dreading what happens at the end of life. We have hope in Christ. In First Peter chapter 1, looking at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Reserved in heaven for you. Reserved where? In heaven for who? Wonderful. 
who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Not only that, we have redemption. We have redemption. Think about all that we have. It's not that, you know, maybe I will get, maybe I will have. This one we have because we're justified. It tells us in uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. This we have. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Redemption. We're bought from the slip market. We're redeemed and bought and purchased from the sins of the past, from the wilderness. Now we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We have fellowship. Fellowship with the Father. Fellowship with the Son. And fellowship with the people of God. We have First John chapter 1 verse 3. That which we have seen and had declared we unto you. That she also may have. That she also may have what we have seen of Christ. What we have seen of his death. What we have seen of his atonement. That will declare unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, a fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We have confidence. We now approach the throne of grace boldly, confidently. Because now we are adopted into the family of God because of what Christ has done. First John chapter 5 verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have. This is the confidence that we have. Tonight, the Lord will renew that confidence in you. Whatever you ask Him, He will give unto you. The strength you need, He'll give unto you. And the mercy you need, He'll give it unto you in Jesus' name. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask, tell me. If we ask, tell me. Are you asking something from the Lord? This new year, have you asked something from the Lord? It will be done. Because if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. Now we have adoption into His family. We're looking at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 15. It says, And ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We're coming back to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. It says that because of this grace, we have all that. Verse 3 now. And not only so, we glory in tribulations. Also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is which is given unto us. Look at this. It says, Now that we have access into the kingdom of God and into the grace of God, we glory, we rejoice. We're delighted, we're happy, we're excited in tribulation. Paul, I don't understand that there's tribulation, that means trouble, that means trial, that means opposition, that means persecution, and you rejoice. He said, yes, if there is no hunger, I will not know the provision of the food my, my father has for me. If there is no thirst, I will not know the provision of refreshing water 
that my parents have for me. And if there is no need, I will not know the sufficiency that God has provided. If there is no persecution, I will not know the inner strength and inner courage that God can give me. If there were no buffeting of the enemy of the devil, I will not know the sufficiency of the strength of the grace of God. And he says, when I see that coming, and then I see that this is all Satan can do. I look to my heavenly father now. I said, I have the resources that will take care of all these things. I rejoice to know that tribulations make me discover more of the grace, more of the strength, more of the power, more of the provision of the Lord. So now I glory. And we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation Work it, patience. You need patience, you need perseverance, and the tribulation comes. And then it brings out what you didn't know was there. It brings perseverance, and then brings experience, and experience hope, and hope that make it not ashamed. You will not be ashamed. Because now he gives us that hope. And it says the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts. It will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Next time when you see problem, know that the solution is nearby. When the pressure comes, they know that the power, the power to sustain you, that power is nearby. Because of that, you are not sorrowful anymore. Your tears are wiped away. Your sorrow is gone. If the devil is strong, look up to God and see that your God is stronger. That thing has come for you to prove the power of the Almighty in your life. You will not be defeated. James chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials and troubles and temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And let, but let patience have a perfect word, that ye may be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. Can you think of the time in your life this year, wanting nothing, lacking nothing? You look to the left, you look to the right, you look to the front, and you look to the back, lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Am I talking to somebody there today? Lacking nothing. That time has come. And whatever you need, you can call upon the Lord. It will be done in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 4, reading from verse 12. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange. Turn those two things together. Beloved, your beloved of God. The beloved of Christ. The beloved of heaven. Beloved, think it not strange. Anything that comes... You know, you must know who you are. You must know that you are a child of God, adopted into the kingdom of God. You are passed through the gate and through the door of grace by faith. And because of that, you are beloved. Whatever happens now, think it not strange. Concerning the very trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But tell me the next word there. I said, tell me the next word there. Let's say, for example, somebody is sick. And then as that person is sick, it's like, uh, you know, how am I going to go through this? And then you have a knock at the door. And somebody that has healed that kind of sickness before is knocking at the door. And somebody who has never lost any case of, of um, you know, of a patient is knocking at the door. Although the sickness is there, but the healer is nearby. The great physician is nearby. The helper is nearby. And is knocking at the door. Your heart will come to rest. There will be joy in your heart. Because, you know, he is coming in. It's just a matter of some moments now. Everything will be all right in your life. Just a matter of moments now, everything will be all right. But rejoice in so much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also. What kind of joy? With exceeding joy. Praise the Lord, that's your Lord. 
Praise the Lord. That's your privilege. You will not miss your blessing in Jesus' name. Point number two, the reconciliation of, un of the ungodly through Christ's sacrifice. The reconciliation of the ungodly through Christ's sacrifice. We're coming to Romans chapter 5. And we're reading from verse 6. Romans chapter 5. Reading from verse 6. In verse 6 it says, For when we were without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. I'm sure you have known people that sincerely, they want to come to the Lord. Sincerely, they want to have the grace of God. Sincerely, they want to have the redemption of the Lord. But they feel they are not qualified. They feel that I cannot come. I must become better. I'm so dirty. I'm so evil. I'm so ungodly. In their state of mind, how can I go to the Lord? What qualifies a sick man for the help and the treatment of the doctor? Exactly, his sickness. What qualifies a hungry man, a hungry person for the food? Exactly, the hunger. What qualifies a man in need for the supply of a benefactor? Exactly, the need that he has. What qualifies a sinner for the salvation of the Lord is sin. If we were not sinners, we will not have salvation. If we are not sinners and ungodly, Christ will not die. Look at this. For when we were yet without strength, that's the time to come to Christ. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely naturally. For a righteous man, well, one die, scarcely that will happen. But eventually yet, for a good man, some will even dare to die. Look at verse 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, you are preaching the gospel, you are telling them Christ died for us. Christ will give us forgiveness, He will give us salvation, He will give us justification, He will adopt us into the family of God. The sinner says, Yes, that's exactly what I want. Yes, that's what I need. But you know, I'm so much in bondage, and I'm so much powerless, and I'm committing sin every time. I don't want to, but I'm doing it. You see, that's exactly why Christ has come. That's why he says, but Christ commended his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. There are people who are saved already. They are born again already. And they are wanting all the time. I don't know why this is coming to them. Yes, I'm saved. Yes, I'm born again. Yes, I'm a child of God. Am I sure I'm going to remain saved until the very end? Am I sure the wrath of God will not come upon me? Am I sure I still will not perish much more than being now justified by his blood? We shall be saved from wrath through him. Somebody there say, Amen. Amen. For if when our oh, enemies were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. I missed an amen there. As Gentiles and even as Jews, mankind as a whole, who are without strength, who are weak, who couldn't resist sin by ourselves, utterly devoid of power to release ourselves from the bondage of sin. But that's the time Christ died for us. Why we're, we're yet sinners? In verse 8, constantly missing the mark, missing the standard set by God, having lost the image of God through the fall. We lack inner strength. We lack the power to be righteous. But thank God, that's the time Christ came to our rescue, we're ungodly, unlike God, 
We have lost the image of God, the likeness, the nature of God. We live contrary to God, loving what he hates and hating what he loves. And it was at that time when we couldn't help ourselves, the help came. Your help has come. Our enemies, enemies acting contrary continually in hostility against God and against holiness. Yet Christ came and Christ died for us. Now for all who truly believe, we're justified, we're saved, we're reconciled unto God. Look at those verses again, verse 6. We're looking at Romans chapter 5. And we're reading from verse 6. It says, For when we were, past tense, yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. We are without strength, now we have strength. I said, now we have strength. Verse 8, but God commended this love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, unlovable, Christ died for us. We were unlovable as past tense, by the grace of God now we are lovable. The verse 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We are passed over the wrath. Wrath will not come upon our lives in Jesus' name. Verse 10, for if we are enemies, we are reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more. We were reconciled when we were enemies. Now we are no more enemies, we are his children. And he has brought us into a kingdom. He says much more. Being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Look at verse 11. And not only so. He said, we've got grace, not only so. We've got access into the family, not only so. That is, that's not the end. We're reconciled unto God, not only so. There's still much more. And now we have the righteousness of God, not only so. There's still much more. And the wrath of God is no more in our lives. It's no more going to be upon us. It says, not only so. It says, there's still more. Verse 11, and not only so. But we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have received the atonement, full redemption. Thank God it is mine. I said, thank God it is mine. I said, thank God it is mine. You will not miss it any day, any moment of the day of your lives in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. And here we're reading from verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever lived to make intercession for them. He's praying for you. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. That's our Savior. That's your Savior. Through him, you'll have true righteousness. We'll come to point number three. True righteousness by grace through Christ's substitution. And let's see what has happened here. We're looking at chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. I'm going to read some verses now. And you'll see what we got from the old Adam. What we got from uh, the first period. And then after that we'll see what we've got from Jesus Christ, the last Adam. We're looking at chapter 5 of Romans, verse 12. See what we've got. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. And death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Look at verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world, 
But sin was not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over them that have not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him that was to come. He's saying, he's telling us there that because of what Adam did, that's why sin passed on all. I don't understand. You don't understand? Because of the complexion, the color of your dad and your mom, that's the complexion you have. It's not your fault. The complexion of your skin takes after what you got from your parents, your height. Your stature, your build, your makeup is because of daddy and mommy, because of what was in them, in each of them. And those things joined together, and those things were then adjusted one way or the other. And then you produce your eyes, the color of your skin, and everything about you. That's what we got spiritually. We got everything from our false spirits. Look at verse 16. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. It now says, for the free gift is coming from Christ. Look at verse 17, the first part. For ye by one man's offense. Death range by one. Much more. Then he goes on. Look at verse 18. Therefore, as by, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. And then in verse 20, look at verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might have bound. Then in verse 21, that a sin has reigned unto death. Then it goes on. It tells us then that this we got from Adam. Actually, that is what we learn from Genesis. All through the revelation of the scriptures. Look at Genesis chapter 5 verse 3. And Adam lived and hundred and thirty years and begat a son. Tell me what follows. I said, tell me what follows. Okay, I'm going to do that again. Genesis chapter 5, verse 3. Are you there now? And Adam lived and hundred and thirty years and begat a son. Tell me. In his own likeness. You know, he had fallen. He had sinned. He had lost the image of God. He had lost the likeness of God. The likeness of disobedience, of sin, of evil was now in him. And he begat his son in his own likeness. After his own image, I called his name Seth. We're coming to Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. Telling us what happened after the fall. What will be inherited after the fall. Job Chapter 14, verse 4. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Adam unclean, Eve unclean, and they produce children. Those children will be unclean. Those children also produce children. Those children unclean. And those children will get children. Those children unclean. Until it came to us. Everyone. It says, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Chapter 15, verse 14. In chapter 15, verse 14, what is man? That he should be clean. And he that is born of a woman, that he should be righteous. It's telling us what we inherited. Man, woman, Adam, Eve, unclean, unrighteous, ungodly, sinful, all that passed on us. Chapter 25. In Job chapter 25, verse 4. How then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Psalm 51. In Psalm 51, 
We're reading from verse 5. Psalm 51, verse 5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Psalm 58, verse 3. Psalm 58, verse 3. The wicked are strange from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Isaiah chapter 48. Isaiah chapter 48. Reading from verse 8. Isaiah 48. Reading from verse 8. Yea, thou heardest not. Yea, thou knewest not. Yea, from that time that thine ear was not open. For I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously and was called a transgressor from the womb. That's telling us that we inherited that sin nature from Adam and Eve. But now, thank God, Christ has arrived. Somebody there said, thank God, Christ has come. Say, praise God. Christ has come. And he came for me. He came to turn everything around. What you inherited from Adam and Eve is going to turn everything around in your life in Jesus' name. Because look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 15. You will see. It says in verse 15, But not as the offense, so also is the free gift for a through one, if the offense of one man, many be dead, much more, much more, much more, the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. Are you one of those many people? Grace of God will abound in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 16, and not that it was by that, by one that sinned. So is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift, look at this now, the free gift, now it's available for everyone. The free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Look at verse 17. For in by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more, much more. They which receive a little grace, a limited grace, a barely sufficient grace. What do you think you don't have enough? You have enough of the grace of God. Grace in every situation. Grace to overcome every temptation. Grace abundant to your life in Jesus' name. They which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. You are reign. Therefore, verse 18, as by the offense of one man judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift, you don't pay anything, Christ has paid it all. The free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. You are justified. First, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So, by the obedience of Christ, the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. Thank God for the revelation in your heart. He makes you righteous. It washes your sin. It takes a, get, gets rid of every condemnation and guilt in your life in Jesus' name. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. The grace of God will reach you no matter where you are, no matter where you are being, that grace will accomplish the righteousness of God in your life in Jesus' name. And then it tells us in verse 21 that a sinner has reigned unto death. Even so, even so, might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal life 
by Jesus Christ our Lord. There was guilt. Now there is forgiveness. Now there is freedom. Now there is justification. And it comes to everyone. And that grace of God more and more and more that will make you reign over every challenge. That grace is flowing everywhere now. It reaches me. I said it reaches me. I said it reaches me. I'm looking at somebody that that grace is reaching. That grace is reaching. That grace is reaching. Stand up and tell the Lord, thank God for your grace. Thank God for the justification. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Because that grace reaches me. That grace reaches me. That grace reaches me. He rejects none. He does not cast anyone away. He receives everyone. His grace reaches me.